is up, everybody? Uh, welcome to Dope and Dharma, more specifically Dharma Time. As always, I am the Dharma guy, and he is the Dope Doctor. What's up, man? ¿Qué pasó? ¿Cómo está? Nada, nada. Uh, yo, uh, cansado, man. Cansado. Tired. Um, anyway, now that we've uh, we've done our Telemundo uh, appearances. Sabado <laughs> <laughs> again. Or, or as some of us like to call it, Louis Vision. There you go. Um, anyways, man, so uh, uh, welcome, everybody. Today is a, uh, if you're watching live here on Facebook.com slash WPSN99, you are watching us live. It is a Tuesday afternoon. Uh, feel free to comment and, and, uh, and, and give us your, your thoughts on the topic today. Um, I would like to say it's a beautiful day, but for some of you, I'm sure it is. For me, it's, it's, it's hot. We're back into the it's hot every day phase. So uh, good times. Thankfully, we have AC, so I'm all right. I'll live. Um, <laughs> we are fresh off our show from last night. So for those of you who are local, uh, or I guess non-local as well, right? Because Leo was watching from uh, was yeah. St. Louis, I think, or the Carolinas or something. Where's Leo at? Yeah, Leo's Where? in St. Louis. Okay, yeah. So St. Louis. Um, on Monday nights here locally, we go to a local AM station called WOKB. And that is, uh, was it 1680, I believe, right? On, on the yep. dial there. Um, or yep. uh, if you uh, if you're not local, then um, you can actually go to their Facebook page or their actual radio station page, which is wokbradio.com, and you can uh, I think you can watch or listen via that. And then um, we found out also, or it was it was let out last night during the show that Orange County has picked up that show and it's going to start showing it on their TV, Orange TV, uh, as well. Yep. So right on, bravo for that. Very very cool. Just keeps um, expanding. Just keeps expanding. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, people like to hear what we have to say. That's cool. If only I can get my wife to sign off on that, right? Because she never really wants to hear what I have to say. Um, and and I'm I'm keeping up, man. I'm wearing my my dialed in there from Ian. You got your red one. I got my blue one. There you go. Yeah, he's a good dude, man. I don't mind. I don't mind uh, giving him a little plug. Hey, he gave us some swag too, so that's always cool. Yeah, man. We can be bought, guys. We can be bought. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so on Friday of last week on the Couch Live. Uh, we did a show on how uh, media was uh, impacting mental health, um, and then we yeah. did a sort of a continuation last night on the on the AM station, uh, where we kind of just expanded on that, and then we talked about how our local government was kind of chipping in with some of its employees as well as citizens. And then, um, if you watched on Friday, we touched on some self love, and we thought, you know what, what a great topic to do on Tuesday. So today's show here on Dharma Time, we're going to talk about self love, you know, loving yourself. You know, what is it? What does it mean? What does it look like? You know, things of that nature. So, um, without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump right into it, man. So, uh, self-love, I, I gotta admit, that's a, um, it's a hard topic for a lot of people, man. It, it is, uh, it, it was, it was, it was even hard for me, to be honest with you. Um, cause it's such a vast concept, right? It looks mm. so many different ways to so many different people. So for me... I had what I thought to be self-love because I was a very confident individual. I believed in myself. Um, I, uh, uh, I I made sure I made you know what I thought to be the best decisions to help myself out and do all these other things. And, and I had respect for myself. I didn't take anything from anybody. And so right. I considered all that to be self-love, which it is a version of, right? But as I got further into my spiritual practice and as I got my kids and my wife and everything else, I started to realize, okay, well, that was only one aspect of self-love. Another aspect of self-love is taking care of yourself, right? It's also the way you talk to yourself and, and, and the level of, of um, I don't know, like the rope you give yourself, you know what I mean? Like the, the compassion that you give yourself, allowing yourself to make mistakes without kind of really trashing it and, and holding yourself to these unrealistic standards. Um owning people's stuff around you, you know, there's so many different variants of self-love. It's a, it's a much more all-encompassing idea, I think, than people want to give it credit. Um, and it's so very, very important, right? One of the things in the uh, in the Eightfold Path that we talk about for, in the spiritual sense is uh, right speech. And right speech is basically, you know, whatever you say, whatever you communicate should be both truthful and useful. Meaning, truthfulness is understanding that, that truth is 360. It's not just my perspective or yours. It's everybody's. And then useful, is it useful? Is it kind? You know, is it going to benefit the situation? And it has to be both of those. It can't just be, well, it's true. So I'm saying, no, you're just being an asshole, right? And so 
It's got to be truthful and useful. And then whenever I'm teaching that in groups, um, the very next question I ask is, who is the most important person to have that that with, that truthfulness and usefulness? Yourself. And so I think we're going to start there, and that's self-talk. And and what I what I like to say say to people is, you know, uh, if you had a loved one, if you had like, you know, think of somebody that really looks up to you. I, I typically try to go with a little kid, because it just it hits a little bit harder. So let's just let's, we'll use that example, like a little kid that looks up to you, like a son or a daughter, a little brother, a little sister, who knows, um, and, and they look up to you as a, as a mentor, as as a loved one. And uh, they come to you and they tell you, hey, you know what? I messed up. I, I made a bad decision. I'm so stupid. I'm an idiot. You know, um, I'm, I never do anything right. I should die. You know, all these, all these crazy things. Typically, we wouldn't look at that person and say, yeah, you're right. You are kind of stupid. You messed up. You're an idiot. You're worth nothing. You know, you should die. We wouldn't say those things. And, and where did you go? And we just lost Louis. We lost the dope doctor. He decided to just bail on us. Uh, you know, he's older, so I think he has a problem with, you know, technology. These young whippersnappers into him. Sure. Oh, there he goes. Hey, Grandpa. What happened? Did you, the technology sneak up on you there a little bit? Disappeared. Oh, okay. What you said truth is unuseful. <laughs> My computer said, well, then I'm, <laughs> I'm out. Yeah. Um, so anyways, what I was saying, though, was, was, you know, we don't typically talk. We wouldn't talk to our loved one that way. We wouldn't tell our loved one, that, that little kid that comes to us, like, yeah, you are stupid, you idiot, and you deserve to die, and you make, you know, your worth. We wouldn't say those things. And, and when I say why, people typically say, because it's not true, it's not going to help them, it doesn't do any good, you know, it's mean, it's hurtful, and all these other things. And so then my question to them is almost always, okay, well, then why do you talk to yourself that way? And think about it. We've all done that, right? Like, that's actually looked at as almost a positive, right, for these highly motivated people as we hold ourselves to these ridiculously high standards. And then when we don't meet them, instead of being compassionate and saying, hey, you know what, it is what it is, you know, it's out of my control. No, it's like, gosh, well, I should have done better. I know better. I should. And we beat ourselves down. And so, you know, first and foremost, I think that's going to be everybody's homework. And so before I switch over to get his thoughts, I'm going to give everybody a little bit of homework right now is I want you to start talking to yourself the way you would that little kid that just came up to you, that loved one that's asking you your advice. Start talking to yourself the way you would to that little one and see what happens. So uh, go ahead, man. Let me get your thoughts as we get started on this topic. Well, you know, there's a there's a, there's a lot of thoughts on, on loving yourself. I mean, you know, one thing is just not putting yourself in bad situations. Um, I think a piece of loving yourself is seeing how many things – or how many situations you put yourself in that actually work against your greater good, whatever that be, what your current goals are or what your desires really are. Um, and it's almost like having a, you know, like I, I, from a little kid, I was told I had an angel on one side, devil on the other. And I called the little red one, you know, the, the one on the right side, the little red midget ever since I was a itty bit little kid. Right? right. So little people don't get upset with me. Don't, I'm not trying to say anything to you. I'm talking about the little red midget on my shoulder. Um, so, and so I've always called it that, and it felt real, but I followed it to the letter. So that same little voice has always said things to me, um, and not in a schizophrenic way or hallucination way, but in a way that I tend to go with that part of the committee, you know, the committee in everybody's head. I went with that for so many years. Where I catch it today, even at 51, because I, I like – talking out loud a lot of times I'll talk to myself and sometimes when something I'll hit myself or I'll do something wrong especially like in a golf course and I go oh Louie you idiot then I'll find myself calling me an idiot I'll be like wait a minute don't do that I don't like it so yeah. whereas before it was just okay it was acceptable I do catch myself not liking it when I say that to myself I'm like whoa where'd that come from who are you yeah. you know uh, don't do that so I try not to say those words like that but it's a good little catch and I think a lot of us probably accidentally do it you go oh well, no, you're no, right. I'll, because... go, wait. I'll say stuff like that. I'll go, Lil Wade, but I won't, yeah. I won't call myself the idiot part. So that's okay. Yeah, well, no, you're right. Because even something that is ins uh, like seemingly insignificant as that, and you're you know, a relatively healthy individual, um, that, that has an impact. We might not think so. We might think it's benign. You know, we might think it's, oh, it's nothing, you know, whatever. Uh, it does have an impact. Because if you say it out loud long enough, you start to believe it. You do. Right. Um, you know, you might not... You might think that you're impervious to that, but you're not. You're still human. Right. Uh, it might not affect you today, 
but tomorrow it might, you know, it, it might, you might say it at the wrong time, man, when you're a little bit more vulnerable than you're used to. And it starts to kind of seep in a little bit. Um, yeah. That's why I have a rule in my house. My son will do that sometimes. My son will start to you know, like call himself stupid or an idiot for yeah. doing things. Yeah. And I immediately yeah. step in and say, oh, buddy, we don't talk like that in this house. You know, you made yeah. a mistake, it happens, but you're not stupid. You're not an idiot. We're not going to talk like that. Like, um, it's like a rule in my house. And the second I start to hear that, I, I immediately, no, we're not going to do that right now. Because um, right. I don't want him to get into that habit. I don't want him to start believing it. Because if he starts believing it, then he's going to start acting it out. And it's going to be a self-fulfilling prophecy at that point. Um, yeah, you just never know. You, you don't know how deep it really goes, and you don't yeah. know what that really does to your psyche. I mean, we can all pretend yeah. to know uh, how we are or what is actually influencing a lot of our thoughts or our feelings about ourselves, but self-talk is 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 the the number one way to visually or uh, auditorially hear where you're at at the moment. Yeah. Um, so yeah, self-talk, man. I, I think that's good homework that I give out to pretty much everybody is just learning yeah. to talk to yourself the way you would that loved one because. Yeah. When that little loved one comes to you and says, hey, you know, I messed up, you immediately go into compassion mode and trying to help them and make them feel better and motivate them. But for whatever reason, we are a nation of people who feel that, you know, pull yourself up by the bootstraps. You know, like, I got to be tough by myself. And like, come on, dumbass, get it up. Stop. <laughs> That's not effective. It's just not. And the simplest way I can prove that is, has, you know, you know, well, do it for real, actually. It'd be kind of cool if wherever you said, but raise your hand if you've ever trained a dog before, right? I like to see people out there just randomly raising their hands at the moment. But um, if you've ever raised, like, uh, trained a dog, there's two schools of thought. There's one, you know, you, you beat them into submission and make sure they don't poo or pee on the carpet. And then the other <laughs> school of thought is you give them treats when they go outside and do it on the carpet. And if you've right. ever seen how both of them work, all one does is teach them to be afraid of you, and the other one teaches them, hey, this is cool to go outside. Which one you think is it, right? You know, beating them just makes them free, be afraid of you. You think, I don't know what, because they don't comprehend, like, hey, I'm, this is, no, they just think, oh, he's not in a good mood today, time to move. Um, towards the other way, you're showing them, you're giving them a direct reward saying, hey, this is a good thing, I'm going to give you a treat. They start to associate positivity with going outside, and after a while, it just becomes routine. Right. And so it's the same concept with human beings. And, and no, I'm not trying to compare us to dogs, but eh, yeah, it's the same concept. It's training. It's teaching yourself to love yourself. You know, if you do it in a negative way long enough, it's just it's it's counterproductive. It really truly is. Um, so anyway, yeah. uh, so go ahead. Positive self talk goes a real long way. I mean, there's yeah, a lot man. of uh, there's a lot of research that supports that. Um, yeah. You know, that's why we'd make fun of that Stuart Smalley stuff from back in the day. You're Remember, good yeah. enough, you're strong enough, and doggone it, people like you. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, that, that stuff actually goes a long way. And I, and I like to say that the corny stuff works, yeah. and, and, the, and the cool people are all in prison. But the corny stuff really works. So, <laughs> so yeah. do the corny stuff, because that keeps you out of prison and it keeps you doing the right thing. Yeah, man. <laughs> Um, the other thing with self-love, uh, um, and, and, you know, if anybody's who's keeping track here, we're not going to go in any sort of like linear, uh, fashion here. That's not how we do things around here on Dope and Dharma. We just let mm -hmm. it fly, baby. Uh, let the big dog eat, as they, some might say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, no, um, the other thing with self-love, I, I would say, is, is, um, uh, aside from just self-talk, the other thing would be physicality, right? And, and, and before we get to the physical health part of it, Louis kind of already touched on putting yourself in proper position, so let's go there, right? Part of self-love is also is good decision-making, right? Good decision-making, meaning, you know, being responsible, thinking out your decisions, doing some pros and cons, trying to figure out, hey, is this going to help me? Is this going to hurt me? Is this going to take me closer to my goals? Is this going to take me further from my goals? You know, are my loved ones going to be proud of me for this kind of decision, or is this something I'm going to be ashamed of? You know, all that kind of thought process before you actually make a decision Right. To some, might sound neurotic, but it's actually not. It's very beneficial. My mom, one of the phrases that my mom taught me when I was a kid that just drilled into my head, um, and I'm thankful for it to this day. I used to irritate the hell out of me when I was younger, but, and I was think before you act. Because I would always, you know, I was a little hoodlum. I got in a lot of stuff I shouldn't have been into. She'd always tell me, <laughs> think before you act. It's just, not after, right? Because after, we're all, we're all Einstein IQ level, man. Afterwards, we're always like, well, I probably shouldn't have done that, you know? But if you think before you act, like before you do decision, and I try to tell my kids the same thing, you know, before you start to do whatever it is, you just think to yourself, hey, is this something I'm going to be proud of? Is this something that's going to help me? Um, and if the answer is no, then you probably shouldn't do it. Because I see too many people, uh, and there's my mom, that's my job. Um, I see too many people 
putting themselves in precarious situations or situations that just are not beneficial to themselves moving forward. And then right. afterwards, they either want to play victim, like, why is this happening to me? Or they take it to a whole other level thinking, well, my whole world is, is, is shit now because this stuff keeps happening. And then they go off this really deep depression area. And it all really could have been prevented if you just taken a couple moments to make a decision now that your future self is going to look back and thank you for. You know, there's so many things in my life right now. Like, I, um, I have a running joke with my friends and family that, that I'm not... My life doesn't work in the sense of I'm that guy that's going to go buy a winning lottery ticket and win the lottery. That's just not how my life works. That's not how my opportunities come and present themselves. Right. My opportunities present themselves in meeting certain individuals, seeing an opportunity, and working that opportunity, and grasping it, and, and actually working. So I get more opportunities, maybe, than the average every a individual does, but it's still relying upon me acknowledging it and making good decisions with it, and fostering it, and doing it. I'm, just, I'm not the dude that's going to win a lotto ticket and be a multimillionaire. That's just not my, it's not in my cards, right? Um, and so I, 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 where I'm at now in my life, I look back, and I'm so thankful of so many decisions that I've made to put me where I'm at today. Um, mm -hmm. matter of fact, I was actually in this conversation yesterday with Terrence, um, and a couple names came up, you know, in my life, I was very fortunate to come across individuals that were very impactful in my life. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't by chance that they came across, you know, my path, but it also wasn't by chance that they stayed there. And what I mean by that is I saw value in those individuals and, and what they brought to my life. And I made a conscious decision to keep them within my orbit. And I made a conscious decision to learn from those people. Um, mm -hmm. You know, early on, uh, the person who kept me out of jail, basically, was Dean Boggs, right? And, you know, that was his that was his contribution. And then from that, I got into the business world and I met up with Hua Ung and John Corley. Those two individuals were business, business people. Uh, John Corley was making 200 Gs a month, man. And he showed me that there's more to life than just going to get a work going to work and get a paycheck. He showed me the possibilities in life and told me how to how to use my natural gifts, you know, to more than just getting a, a, a check from somebody somewhere. He just he opened my eyes to more that was out there. And then after that I met Terrence at the Postal Service. And Terrence uh, Terrence showed me things that, that uh, I didn't understand that a man could do. Right? I was under the impression, you know, the old school John Way, like men were just very rugged and didn't do this, and didn't do that. And then here he comes, who's a loving, compassionate person. And then I saw him with his daughter and how, and then and it forced me to say, whoa, okay, you know, because part of my French, but I was under the impression at that age of my life that those were bitch things. Like, oh, you're a bitch for doing that, you know? And he showed me like, well, wait a minute, I don't think he's a bitch. I think I respect him. I look up to him and he's doing these things. So maybe I got to rethink how this is going, right? Um... And, and then after the Postal Service, you know, you, Louie, like I, I came across you and, and uh, you introduced me to a whole world that I was never even interested in at all. Um, and here I am now. And, 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 and I thank you for being in my life as well. But at the same token, I made those decisions to keep those people in my lives and I made the decisions to take those opportunities. And that is self-love. Self-love is, self is being self-love is being smart enough to look around you and see, you know what, I got some good opportunities here and I'm going to take them. And I'm going to right. keep these people in my life. And I'm going to allow them to, to, to teach me and give me insight. I'm going to let this unfold, right? And I think too many people don't do that for a multitude of reasons. Maybe they're afraid it's, going to, you know, it's not going to work out or they're afraid to put themselves out there or whatever it might be. But that's not self-love. You know, love yourself enough to make decisions today that your future self is going to look back and be like, oh, whew, thank you for saying yes to that. Right. Go ahead, man. No, it's just the exact opposite of sabotage, right? You yeah. Know? And so, I mean, we can easily go back and look at our lives and be like, okay, I sabotaged this situation. I sabotaged that situation. And then later on, you know, I mean, you, you, you're you going to have to be okay with where you're at. But we say that so that you don't have a low self-esteem today. But if you really, really, really could do some things over, you would move some things around just to not sabotage it. You know, um, now... The thing with that though is is it's hard to identify at the moment what you're sabotaging. Yeah, you know, it, it's hard to know in in the brief moment. So I would encourage everybody that, that, that to do a little check on yourself. Am I loving myself today? Am I doing what I need to do to myself? Because like I'm gonna give you an example. Where I'm where I do not do well is taking care of myself medically, taking care of myself physically. <laughs> like psychologically, I feel like I'm on point. You know what I mean? Like like I. Sure. 
I've studied that. I've worked at that. I, and that's where I put all my emphasis on all those years is making sure I was psychologically well because the biggest contributor to a lot of things that were happening to me was the way I viewed the world, the way I viewed myself, right. and the way I viewed certain things, right? So I dealt with that emotionally. So I feel pretty healthy that way. Don't really get too stressed out. Don't really get too upset. I mean, I'll go up and down real quick, but I don't stay there. I don't stay in that pocket. I can come back right. chill more quick. But physically, oh, my God, I treat this body like crap. Yeah. I don't have you, get have you still gone out. to the doctor for your neck yet? No, I haven't gone to the doctor. It's been how many no, years it, now? No, it's like I'm driving around a Mercedes Benz that's full of mud. <laughs> you know what I mean? I feel like I drive a Mercedes Benz that's full of mud. The windshield wipers aren't working. It's got, it's got a crack bondo everywhere. It's got flat tire. It's got bondo. That's that's what I do, and so that's where I still need to learn. So you know, just because you know it one way doesn't mean you know it all the ways. And and so I think it's important for us to understand that that. Uh, that that's part of it as well, taking care of yourself. Yeah, well, and, and so loving yourself on the mental side of things would, would be seeing opportunities and grasping them and, like you said, not sabotaging. Another part of loving yourself is, is education, right? And I don't necessarily mean just schooling. I mean education. You know, a lot of my education has come from the people around me and the books that I've read, the articles that I've read. I'm, I'm constantly expanding my knowledge on things. And when you start to learn more things, it just in life in general, you start to feel more confident. You feel like you bring more value to situations. And right. then when you start learning more about yourself, right, you start looking inward and start, you know, how do I become the best version of myself? And, you know, asking questions of why do I do this and why do I do that? Like that, that internal growth is all self-love. Um, <clears throat> and then, yeah, the other half of that equation would be medically, you know. And, and as a dude, I, you know, I've had struggles with that as well. You know, I, I had a period of time where I didn't go to the doctor for over 20 years. Even though I had insurance, I just, you know, rub some dirt on it. It'll be fine. Um, and, and, and I'm old enough now in my age to look back and think that was stupid. You know, I, like I'm only here not because I was like, you know, manly. No, I just, I got lucky, you know. Yeah. Like I got lucky that I didn't get like cancer and not know because I never went to, you know. I, there's so many things that could have happened to me in those 20 years that I'm just, I'm not smart. I'm, I'm lucky is what that is. <laughs> like, and so... And the other half of that part there with the medical stuff is also, you know, eating, eating right, you know, exercising, you know, movement. Um, you know, when you start to take care of yourself in a physical realm, I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen this. I had over the years, I've had clients who come to me and all they're thinking is I want to lose weight. That's it. They just, all, you know, I want to lose weight and I'll be fine. You know, I'm good to go. And that's all their mind is focused on. But I've been doing it long enough to know, oh, get ready. And I'm not talking about like a five or ten pounds of vanity. Pen. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the people who need to lose 30, 40, 50 and up, you know, major life transformation type thing. Because every single one of them that we were successful, they came to me thinking their problem and all they wanted to do was just lose some body fat and that's it. Every single one of them that were successful in doing that also came to me later and they, like, their whole lives improved. Their relationship with their spouse, their relationship with their loved ones, their their work life, all that stuff improved. And it's not a coincidence. It's because it's yeah. related. When you start right, to work out and you start to take care of yourself, first and foremost, you're starting to release endorphins and stuff. You just you're feeling good, man. It's a natural distressor. It takes away some of your depression. It just makes you feel great. Right? And then when you feel great, you start to get you get the confidence too of of feeling great and looking great. Right? So you start to look better, you get confidence. And, and yep. that's that's an intangible that everybody says that they want, but nobody knows how to get, right? Everybody says that they want confidence, but it's like this elusive thing that nobody can define. Well, being physically capable of things actually does give you some confidence, right? If you go into the gym, not for everybody, and it's not absolutely necessary because I see Marissa's on here. I wouldn't recommend her go and do some squats real quick. But So my point, though, is I've seen so many people come to me and never been in the gym at all and are very intimidated by it. But right. then they start doing squats and deadlifts and things that they never thought that they could do before. And they're getting stronger. They start to feel like they can take on anything. You know, they start to have this vibe, this confidence, and it changes the way people view them. It changes the way they view others, which then by definition changes the opportunities that come across them. It, like it's all positives, basically, is what I'm getting at. Right. And that's part of loving yourself. Is 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 like if you had a Ferrari outside, you probably wouldn't be putting the cheap gas in it. You know, right. you'd right. be putting the good gas because it's a Ferrari. I spent. Three hundred thousand dollars. Well, view yourself that way. You know, yeah. do the good stuff to it. Take care of it because if you don't, it's going to start to break down on you. And then the problem yeah. with it breaking down on you is it never just stops physically. 
if it starts breaking down physically, then it starts messing up with your mentality, starts messing up with your health, it starts messing around with the people around you, and it just all comes crumbling down very quickly. And right. so part of loving yourself, like we said, is the self-talk and everything else and making good decisions, but it's also taking care of your body physically and, and emotionally and everything else so that way you're prepared for the future. Yeah, put Marissa's comment up there because I like this Which response. One? I've seen her work out a lot. Okay, I'll uh, put the first one on here. She says, uh, thoughts and emotions affect the body, so you're somewhat taking care of yourself medically. I just did yoga for an hour and no excuses, Louie. So she's holding you accountable. Course, I like that. The one up. And then the next me. one, she says, uh, that's why I post my workouts, to motivate someone less limited than me who thinks they can't do it. Limited yeah. is in quotes because I'm really not. I agree 100%. That's awesome. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it, I mean, it's things like that, and they are inspiring, and it is cool. And and so all those things are, are, are loving yourself. you got to take care of the. It's the four quadrants, right? Physiologically, what are you putting inside your body? Physically, what are you doing, you know, moving around and, and making sure your body is still working and mechanically right? Uh, psychologically, what are you thinking about yourself? What are you thinking about life? Uh, the, 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 uh, the way you view things, your perspective. Uh, and then, of course, spiritually, where do you feel inside the world and how do you feel like you relate to that part of the world? So so if you feel like physically oh, I'm an aching and you're not taking care of yourself physically, you're physiologically, you're putting crap inside yourself. Psychologically, you're thinking negative thoughts about yourself and spiritually, you're thinking God hates me. God doesn't. There is no God. There's no reason, no point of living. Well, then where are you? You're in depression. You're 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 in a serious uh, 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 problem space for possible suicide or suicide slowly which suicide slowly is just you treat the world like crap you treat, you treat yourself like crap you drink too much you smoke too much you do drugs and you're like whatever happens happens we're all going to die anyway so if you get in those situations that's not loving yourself that's just existing or that's yeah. just living to die that's not living to live you know you may think you know yolo you only live once no you're not even living this once you're just yeah. kind of rushing through it and you're just going through the motions but you're really not making any kind of difference for yourself that's in a positive way uh, yeah, couldn't agree more. Um, the other one that pops to my mind as we're talking about this, um, and, and for me, this is one of the more important ones for my own life, right? Each person has their own struggles or whatever, but I know for myself, one of the ones that I've struggled with when it comes to self-love is, um, you know, expectations, right? Compassion to yourself in that sense. Yeah. Um, so for me, uh, uh, being the size that I am, I've always been physically able to kind of just will my way to do whatever I want half the time, right? right. And as right. I said before, I've been very blessed with a lot of opportunities. And so I, I, my life, I've grown up with the vibe of like Parker Lewis can't lose, you know? And for those mm. for those you younger people, that was a show back in the day. Um, right. But I had that mentality of I can't lose, you know? I'm, I'm just yeah. constantly winning. And so as I've gotten older and, and my physical uh, capabilities have diminished slightly, um, and then I've gotten to, you know, relationships or with, with uh, friends and family and everything else, that I can't control those outcomes because it's not relying upon my effort. It's relying upon right. theirs as well. I start to get real kind of uh, disappointed and upset that I can't achieve whatever it is that I think I should be able to achieve, right? And, and so uh, um, I have this unrealistically high standard that I feel compelled to try to meet every day. And then when I can't meet that, because nobody could, instead of acknowledging that, sometimes I'll get down on myself or I'll get frustrated. Like, why can't this happen, you know? And, yeah. and that's a part of self-love. Part of self-love is just compassion. Hey, man, <laughs> you couldn't hit that anyways. And once again, you know, if... If your friend or family came into you upset and disappointed that they couldn't go outside and lift your car above their head, you'd probably tell them they're crazy. Like, why would you? Right. You couldn't do that anyway. So why are you trying to do that? Right? Well, it's the same concept. And that's the first truth, by the way. And in, 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 in spirituality, the first truth is pain is a part of life. That we got to accept that. We have to stop thinking that today is going to be the day that everything's going to line up and go exactly the way I think it should. That's never going to happen. That's not how life is meant to work. And so when it comes to these expectations that we put upon ourselves, and I know I'm not alone in that, you know, I know a very, a lot of very highly motivated people have this drive to succeed inside of them or this idea that they can hit these benchmarks and when they don't, they're devastated, right? Meanwhile, when you look back at their accomplishments, they're phenomenal and anybody would be grateful to have that, but because it wasn't on their list, they're disappointed or whatever, right? And so I, I think that's important to touch on because I don't think I'm alone in that. I think there's a lot of people who, maybe not in every aspect of their lives, but we have some sort of aspect where they have unrealistic expectations. 
Maybe that's your mm -hmm. niche and that's what you think you're the best at, you know, because you've had so much success. But then you start to run into some walls every now and then. And then you start to kind of like get really down on yourself. And, and that's not loving yourself, man. We, we have to compassion, compassion for Because in this world, you can live your entire life and you'll never meet anybody ever that is more deserving of your love and compassion than you. Period. <laughs> like, into discussion. And that's right. a hard lesson for some of us to learn in, in, in certain aspects, right? In some aspects, yeah, I totally get that. But if I'm honest, and, I'm, and if the rest of us are honest, uh, yeah, the, we, we agree with that. But there's a little part inside of us. There's that one area that, like, nah, but this one, I, I've got it. No, mm -hmm. you don't. Like, you, you might not. And it's okay. Right? And uh, Richard just said, you know, that's me. And he says he always says the bar high, which, yeah, man, I feel you. What are your thoughts? Because, like, for instance, I know you, right? Like, uh, uh, you're good at what you do in, in, the, in the counseling world to the point where I've been doing, you know, programs with people years later, and they're like, hey, I know this guy, Louie. They, they remember who you are 20 years later. Um, mm -hmm. So you're obviously effective in that, but even you aren't batting a 1,000. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, no. No, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm barely batting as good as Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but, uh, you know, there's a, you know, I hear about the unrealistic expectations and I hear about, you know, setting the bar high and, and all that. And I, and, and I think that's important, but I think that, uh, you got to have a bar, <laughs> you got to yeah. set it. Slow. You know yeah. I mean? That's, that's the point. Uh, you know, how do you set goals in a life that seems to be on so much autopilot? You know, right. there's, there's so many people out there that feel like uh, there's no way to get out of the rut that they're in or the situation they're in. Right. Um, and so they're just like on autopilot, you know, and, and, and just existing. And I, and I keep going back to that because I think part of loving yourself is, is uh, being able to analyze your current situation and, and, and break out of, of whatever rut that you feel that you're in. You got, you got to live uh, and experience things in a way that you can embrace them. Right. Like, can you embrace who you are right now? And, and, and when I say who you are, I don't mean like I'm a lawyer, I'm a doctor, I'm things like that. It's like <laughs> That's you know, you when do. you get out. For instance, if I would ask you, Trinity, you know, when I first meet somebody, what, what do you typically ask somebody? You go, hey, so what do you do for a living? Yeah. You know I mean, what I challenge everybody to do is answer just like this. Next time you're at a party, next time you're in a situation, somebody goes, hey, so so tell me about yourself or, or what do you do? Say, well, I, I'm honest. I'm truthful. Uh, I'm loving. I'm empathetic. I'm kind. I'm generous. You know, and they go, no, no. I mean, but like, what do you do for a living? I'm kind. I'm honest. I'm empathetic. I'm loving. <laughs> truthful. You know, make make them say what they really want to say. You know, right. like what do you do for money? I'm kind. I'm empathetic. Love, and you just keep doing it, and, and and they'll be like, "What?" So you don't want to tell me what you do for? I told you what I do for a living. Now, as far as occupation, what my occupation is, that's different. But what I do for a living, those are the qualities I do for a living. That's right. how I get paid. That's how I get paid emotionally. That's how I get paid financially. My occupation is different. You know what I mean? So in other sure. words, no matter what you do for a living, no matter what occupation you have, that should not change that you're honest, you're truthful, you're kind and all that. Now, it's very easy to call out the world. We all do it, right? We do it. We do it on the we the middle. Uh, we call out the world. It's fun. Number one, it's, 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 it's useful for the moment, right? Yep. But can you call out yourself and then make the, the, the adaptations or the changes that are necessary? Because that's the hard part, man. The hard part is then... Do I really need to adapt? Well, if I want this outcome, I, I probably should. Uh, and there's always time to do it. Like, I know that, that we've all thought, look, I'm 51 years old. It's really easy to say, look, I'm an old dog. I'm not changing. That's not true. Uh, there's people that I see at 70 years old that would go, oh, you're still very young. And I'm thinking, yeah. you know what? That's that's 19 years away. Yeah. So in 19 years, you could do it. I mean, if I go back 19 years, I'm not the same person I was 19 years ago. I hope not. So maybe they're they're right. There's still a Man. lot of time to still make changes. I've seen my parents make tremendous changes in their life at advanced ages, and I'm like impressed as hell. Yeah, man. You know, with how they love themselves, how they take care of themselves, uh, how they how they treat themselves emotionally. And I'm like, wow, man, I would have never thought that possible. Yeah. If you had told me as a young kid, uh, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, I would have believed that. But sure. that's absolutely not even true. 
No, I see it with my own mom even. You know, I, I see the difference in her from when I was a kid and how she treats my kids and how she's evolved and stuff. And it's it's all in a, in a great way. You know, I agree 100%. Um, and I agree with you too that um, we do have to have bars, right? We have to set bars. I think that, um, you know, that there's a couple schools of thought. There's one where, where people have a hard time where to set that bar. And there's another school of thought where people have a hard time showing themselves compassion when they don't hit that bar. Um, and if you don't hit the bar, and that's where my problem was. If I didn't hit the bar, that was it. Like, I, it was all or nothing, you know. Second place is the first loser, you know. Um, and while that has motivated me over the years and has, and has achieved a certain level of success for me, it's also been damaging to my psyche at times with this all or none mentality, right. Because you can really start to kind of get down on yourself and say, well, what's the whole point, you know. Um, and that's when you got to find the victories, man. And as, as Richard said earlier, and I agree with him as well, and that is the only time you actually truly fail at something is when you stop, right? Like yeah. if, you, if, if you try something right. and it didn't work out, if you stopped, then you're right. You failed. You didn't hit that bar. But as long as you're still right. trying, then you haven't failed yet. You just haven't hit the bar yet. But you're still actively right. working towards that bar. And I think that's where the compassion comes into play. That's where the loving yourself comes into play is allowing yourself that room to keep trying. Well, right. it's because the bar is not is not a, is not a cap. It's it's not the yeah. end, right? It's just <laughs> yeah. the next. It, it's just the next checkpoint. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's no, there's no end to this marathon until you just drop dead. So you yeah. just keep going to the next checkpoint, to the next checkpoint, to the yeah. next checkpoint. Um, another thing that I think is important is that uh, if you don't take care of yourself, if you don't love yourself and embrace who you are, and accepting all of your flaws and what they are, and the flaws that just aren't working for you, you know, work on them as best you can then what's going to happen is you're going to be too needy of a person. You're going to you're going to depend way too much on someone else to fill that 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 love that you're not giving yourself. Right. And now you set yourself up for some real disappointment because if if you don't love yourself enough, how can you expect someone else to fill that void enough? Well, you're not doing it. So yep. what do you want me to you want me to fill the cup that you're walking around with empty and you're comfortable with being empty. You've probably been walking around with it empty all your life, and then you come and go. Oh no, you're supposed to fill it. Yeah, well, fill I it. my own cup. I Make got my me own happy. Cup to fill. Yeah, you know, yeah. And I, it's hard enough filling my cup. Now you want me to fill your cup? You know, it's you know. So yeah. so we we all have to walk around a little bit with a little more full of a cup. And when it's empty, you got to know how to go get it filled. You yeah. know, it, you can't just expect someone else to know that it's empty or expect someone else to fill it for you. And when you do that, it's just a. Not only are you a drain to your own emotion, drain to your own psyche, you might drain those around you. Well, and that's a, a massively huge point that I think we should tackle right now. And that is, you know, well, we were talking earlier, different ways of saying it. But the way I typically say it is, is, especially for those of you who are fixers, that we try to go around and help the people around us and fix around us or whatever, is you can't fill from an empty cup, right? Um, other people say you can't pour, whatever. My thing is you can't fill from an empty cup. So if, I'm, if my cup is empty, meaning if my cup, you know, I've just given too much and I haven't filled it back up, then right. I'm essentially not as much value as I feel like I could be or even should be to yeah. those around me. Because if those around me, if they've got their hands out expecting me to pour some into their cup, but I'm walking around with an empty cup, I'm not going to that, – see, that's me. I'm not going to stop trying to fill theirs. Right. I'm not going to just tell them no because that's not who I am. I'm going to try to fill it. But I'm going to – you know, every little drop in that cup is just gone. I'm trying. And so now I'm feeling exhausted. I'm feeling like a failure, like I wasn't able to help this person, right. and I'm tired, and I'm emotionally exhausted, and then they're not getting their cup filled either, so they're, I didn't, I wasn't of no benefit to them, you know, and that, who knows what kind of ramifications that could have, because they're not going to say, well, his cup was empty, no, they're going to take it to themselves, like, well, I apparently can't be helped, or what, so it's just like, it's, it's a bomb that explodes everything around me, right? Yeah, and it's so, just so draining. Yeah. It's so draining. Yeah, so instead... <laughs> We gotta fill our cups, man. We gotta find ways of filling our cup. We gotta find ways of self love. We gotta find ways of of having our cup overfloweth, you know, with with love. And, and because um, you'll notice that when your cup is full, when you're recharging your batteries, when you're taking care of yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, when you're doing all these things, man, you'll just notice that when people come to you with their empty cups, dude, you're just you got all the answers, man. You're coming from a, such a healthy place. To give that person the the knowledge or the advice or the help or whatever it is that they're asking for, it's readily available and it doesn't drain you at all. 
You you do that and you walk away thinking, all right, that's cool. I'm glad I got to help that person. You know, that's the difference. When you got an empty cup, it's draining, and then you start to get resentful. Right. Like, why is everybody coming to me with their cups and I can't do? You have all these thoughts. Versus when your cup is full, there's plenty to go around, man. Let's keep the party going, right? And so yeah. It is absolutely important to fill your cup, and you can do that in various different ways. One of the most important ones that we're talking about today is loving yourself, finding ways to fill that cup by yourself. Another way is to find people in your life that you know that can fill your cup, because in your life, you're going to have takers and you're going to have givers. We all know who they are. It's not a, it's not a necessarily inherently bad quality. It's just that's where they're at in their journey of life and what you mean right. to them. Right. They're either givers or takers. They're either emptying your cup or they're filling your cup. And if you find yourself spending all your time with the people who are emptying your cup, maybe you need to reevaluate where you put your time. You know, Maybe you need to find a couple people who fill your cup and spend some time with them as well. Because, once again, it's self-love. That old cliche of you're on an airplane, they tell you to put the mask over yourself first before you try to put it over your loved ones. It's because if you don't, then you're both going to die. But if, at least if you're doing it on yours, you are... are, are in a, an okay position enough to where you can, you know, help this other person next to you as opposed to you're both struggling. Um, and, and that's why it's absolutely important to fill your cup. Cause like I said, you can't fill from an empty cup. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. You got to know how to get what you want. You know, I, I don't know. I, I've told my wife that many times. It's just, I'm just really good at knowing how to get what I want. And, and, um, I've been blessed with, uh, being lucky like that. Right. Because how you get what you want is by giving. And yeah. I learned it real early that, I give to get now. So that's just this weird gift that this world is spirit of the earth is God, whatever it is that you want to believe in. That's a, that's a really cool way to get it. If I just give, 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 I get, and it's like, wow, man, I, you know, I'm not talking financially or anything like that, even though that kind of comes with it a little bit, you know what I mean? Right. But, right. but, but by giving you get, when I was taking, I was just walking around entitled. Like yeah. I'm taking it because I want it. You know, but there was no real philosophy behind it other than you have the cheese. I want the cheese. You know, right. I, I want what you have. I, t I take it from you. I, I, I'm sure. deserving because, you know. So I think part of loving yourself is knowing your real place in the world that, look, man, I'm just a small, little, insignificant, small thing in the world. But, but in my circle, I can be huge in the world. But it's through how you act and behave more than what you say, you know, so you can say all the right things and you could think you're putting out all the right stuff. But if you're not living it and you're not really feeling great, people can feel that negative energy. People yeah. feel that brain. People feel that that's not authentic. That's not real. And and that is not an attractive place to be. So no wonder you're miserable because you're you're yeah. you're, you're you're miserable and you're causing misery. And then you're wondering why stuff isn't working out for you. Well, it's the, the, the negative energy is negative, man. You can't, you can't change yeah. that. You can't, you know, at least you can't change that just by thinking it different. You got to actually do different. You know, like when you say, you know, now that you know better, do better. You know, you got to go do it. You can't just think it. Thinking it is, 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 is great, you know, but that's like having a, a plan and not doing anything with a plan. You wrote it out, but okay, now what? Okay. Right. I mean, I've written many outlines. It doesn't mean I wrote anything with it. You know what I mean? You, the outline's only the beginning. You got you to gotta, you gotta now go past that. You know, get out of the planning stage and get into the doing stage, you know, and, and doing is going out there and, and giving gifts like smiles. You know, you really want the world to change for you. Go smile at the next person you see. Say good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, hey, how are you? Hey, thank you very much. I appreciate you. You know, little things like that make a massive difference in the world. Some of you just walk around. You don't, you don't even look at the person who just walked by you. Yeah. You're too busy trying to look hard or trying to look a certain way or trying to or just in your own life. You know, right. you're not even paying attention to the people that just walked right by you. So you're passing up all kinds of opportunities to get more affirmations of love, which is say, hey, how you doing? And they, oh, very well, thank you. Good, good. How are you doing? And, and wow, man, that, that little interaction might do a lot for your psyche. You don't know. Over time, that will build. Well, guess what happens when you don't say hi to the people next to you? You don't thank the people around you. You don't do that. Well, the isolation builds. You've isolated yourself more and more from the world. And the only things you pay attention to in the world are all the negative interactions. 
but you've passed up the opportunity to give people the positive interactions. And what you're doing is walking around complaining how negative the way the, the way the world is. Nobody really cares. Nobody, you know, the you know this community is this. These people in this city are like this. Yeah, but what did you do to contribute? Did you go out there and smile at everybody? Did you go out there and say good morning to everybody? Did you go out there and open the doors for everybody? Did you go out there and ask how they're doing? Did you contribute? Because as you do that, you'll naturally get a lot of positive stuff back. Yeah, uh, so the two things that, that brings to mind, one to me is going to be the next section that I think we'll finish up on, and the other one is just a, a concept. And what you were just talking about to me sounds an awful lot like attraction rather than promotion. Yes. Meaning, instead of telling you how great I am or how good, no, I'm just going to be mean and do my best, and you're going to naturally see that, and you're going to gravitate to me. Um, that's, you know, attraction rather than promotion. And we did a whole show on that, by the way. Um, mm. The other thing I would say, to me, I think... Um, uh, and this, I think, will be the final subject we talk about on this on the show today. And that is because I, I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I hate doing this because it feels hyperbolic to me. But I'm going to say this is probably one of the most, if not the most, ways of filling our cups and loving ourselves. And that is connection, building connection with others around us. Um, as I've gotten older, as I've gotten kids, as I've gotten married, I'm I'm realizing how important that that is to our humanity. This connection, genuine connection with another human being. You know, yeah. we, we go through life thinking we're these islands. We go through life thinking that, you know, I can only count on myself. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm self-made. I'm whatever. Um, and, and that's just not true. You know, we thrive on connection. That is the one thing that I truly don't think that we can live without, you know. One of the one of the cruel and humane things that can take place to people in prisons is to put them in solitary confinement for an extended period of time. There's been plenty of research and studies that show that is damning to a human being. And, and, and these are people in prison. They're, just, they're not like missing out on their family and everything. No, these are other inmates. That Just that connection alone keeps them sane. But when you remove all connection, they're just sitting by themselves you know, for extended periods of time. It does horrible things to them. Um, and, and that translates into our everyday lives. You know, For any of you out there who are living with people but feel non-connected or feel alone... If you go to work every day, but you feel like you're by yourself, that's destroying you on the inside. Whether you realize it or not, that is having such an impact. And I don't care how many times you tell yourself, oh, I'm good, I don't need them, I don't care. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You might not want to. You might tell yourself that you don't, but you do. Um, and, and so, and, and the way you build that connection is through attraction rather than promotion. It is by behaving in a compassionate and loving way to those around you. It's by seeing the people around you. I don't mean just looking at, oh, yeah, that person's got, no, 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 no. See yeah. them. See the joy. See the pain. See the see the emotions that they're having in their lives. See the value that they bring as just a human being. See them. Right. And the more you see them, the more they're going to see you. And that's going to build a, a genuine connection. You know, one of the things that, it, it was always, it seemed like such an obvious thing to me, but I'll never forget how, like, how awkward it was when I said it to them, like the way they looked at me. Because uh, for them, it was such a foreign concept. I now know it was a lot of it was a sickness and, and what they tell themselves, but I didn't know at the time. But when I was doing groups in and, and, and both uh, Tropical and uh, Newbridge, whatever, there was moments where I would talk to them and I would tell them, I, I don't remember what the, the topics was, but it was a certain day in the, in the topics that I would cover that this would always come up somehow, some way, and, and it'd be, I brought it up to somebody else. And I would always say to them, like, thank you. Thank you for letting me be a part of this journey with you. Like, I felt there was a price, like, those moments in groups, if you've never experienced it, I can't justify it with words. I just, I can't. I, there's no way I can explain to you yeah. that, 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 that moment. It's exhilarating. It is it's some of the greatest moments I've ever had in my life when I'm sitting in a room with people who are, are trying to better themselves and they're in pain and they're learning and they're sharing those moments with me. They're allowing me to participate in their lives at those moments, you know. And what I would always tell them was, thank you for that. Like, there's people out there with billions of dollars and power and everything else, and they can't get this moment right here. This is ours. Like, we're sharing this moment, not them. Nothing they can do can get this. And that's special. Um, and that's what I mean by connectivity. Being aware yeah. and acknowledging those things. Understanding that, that you're connected to another human being right now. Like, that moment is priceless. Nobody can take that. Nobody can get that. And so, uh, you know, that connectivity, I, I can't stress that enough. I truly believe where I'm at in my, in my life now 
if I'm trying to assess things, I think connectivity is probably the number one way to help with uh, uh, loving yourself. That along with spirituality, of course. But I think connectivity really, you, you got to have that connection with other people. Everything. It, it really is everything. I think I think mutual experience is love. Um, yeah. Sharing moments with other people is 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 your way of loving them. Um, and so I think belonging, when you're not feeling like a sense of belonging, that's a very hard place to be. Um, and unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there that just don't feel like they belong anywhere, or belong with the family they're in, or belong with the friends that they're in, or belong in the relationship. Whatever it is, that sense of belonging is so darn important, man. And so if you yourself don't really feel like you belong here, then you need some help. You need some help. You need some help. You need to get with somebody and, and you need to start getting that feeling because to connect with other people, which like you said, Trinity, that's, that's vital. Connectivity is everything. Yep. But if you're not even self-connecting, you're not even connecting with your own self, that's a scary place to be. Of course, you're going to want out. You're not going to want to experience this. You're going to want out or you're just going to not want to feel or you don't even want to think. You know, or you just want to do mindless things because when you feel and think, it's just so uh, the voices and the self-talk and it's so uncomfortable and the anxiety and, and all that stuff. Yep. You got to get with somebody, man. You're just you're, you're in a brutal place. You're in a brutal place that just needs some help. And loving, part of loving yourself is asking for help, you know, yep. asking for help healthy, you know, yep. and, and there's a lot of different types of helpers out there, you know, um, you know, like like you said uh, on the on the last show, Trinity, on the couch live. You know, there's there's the the spiritual help. You know, by way of a, a spiritual leader of some type, regardless of what faith it is. There's professional help by the way of you know therapists and counselors and doctors and, and things like that. There's all types of help, but get it. You know, that's, yeah. I think. Well, and, and, that, and, the, and the misnomer a lot of times is people think that nobody cares and nobody wants to help. And that could be further from the truth, dude. We're a helping society. Like, and I don't mean America. I mean the world. We are a helping society. People do want to help. But as I said last night on, on, on WKB, um, they're not going to come knocking on your door. Like, you've got to go out and ask for it. You've got to humble yourself enough to say, hey, man, I can use some help right now. You know, be honest with it. Talk to them. And, and trust me, I promise you there's more people in this world that care than don't. Absolutely. So, um we only got a few minutes left, man. You got anything you want to say to, to wrap up uh, self love today? I, I see that Richard on on uh, Facebook Live put some comments there. What what is it that it, he asked? Oh, look at that! You put me on isolation. I thought you were right? gonna. I thought you were gonna do your. Let me put that back here. Let me. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Uh, no, um, tell me what he puts, um, uh, Let me see. He said, uh, "My wife would tell you I toe the line of loving myself." No, too much. no. He goes. Louis Delgado, can we speak? You know that one. Louis Delgado. Okay, he can says, we... uh, "Louis Delgado, can we, as people, outgive the gift salvation?" What, what does that mean? Help me understand I that. I don't know what that means. Um, I'm, I'm assuming giving the gift of salvation I meaning helping lead people to uh, some sort of a spiritual thing. That's what my assumption is. And then uh, Marissa said, uh, "People overlook all action when they pray or do law of attraction work." Sometimes God or the universe is waiting for us to take action or at least see the tools being provided. Very good. I agree with that. And then mm -hmm. um, Richard followed up his previous comment with, uh, if not, what should that do to our giving thought process? Um, I'm not 100% sure I understand what he's getting at. Um, yeah, I, I, I feel like I'm not able to, to contribute too well to that question because I, I don't feel yeah. like I really what he's asking. But, but I'm going to go with... My okay, first. here we go. He said, God gave us, or let me put this up there. Uh, God gave us salvation. What does that require of our giving? Okay. Uh, that's a great question, and I'm not going to pretend to know the answer to that. I, th I think things like the whole God conversation or, 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 or that whole conversation of a deity is so large and enormous and personal to so many people that I'm not even going to pretend to fully grasp it or understand it. But what I will say is this. I think we all play a role in it. Regardless of what it is, I think we all play a role. And so I think connecting with other people, uh, giving them a sense of belonging by saying, I appreciate you, I love you, I thank you, um, uh, and, and just being there for other people and, and giving of yourself to other people for whatever role that is. So like my role in a lot of people's life, lives is to be there when they make that call, to be there in times where they're the most needy, to be there in times where they're, they're, they're the most uh, 
they're the most in pain. And so my role is to be there for them. And so whatever that means, I, I, I don't know until I'm in that situation. And, and the stuff that comes out of my mouth and the stuff that, that, that I'm inspired to do at that moment doesn't come from me. I, I really do believe that I'm a vessel, that I'm a tool. <laughs> You know, and so I'm there for whatever I'm supposed to be. And I think that's my role. And I think that's everybody's role, really, if you allow yourself to be it. But when I get in the way, then I find myself almost pretending to be the guy instead of just being the guy. And I don't want to pretend to be the guy. I just want to be the guy. I don't want to pretend to be Louis Delgado. I just want to be Louis Delgado, whatever that means. And I don't know what that means. You know, so I'm not going to pretend to know what that means. But if you just let yourself be open as a person and just you know, be there for other people as authentically as you can. I think you start feeling the love that we're talking about, you know, just be authentic. Right um, real quick before we wrap up, Richard says, uh, I believe it requires us to give our all for others, time, money, support, whatever it takes to further the kingdom of Christ. So, um, a good way to yeah, get it. Yeah. I mean, I think if, uh, if your particular spirituality revolves around a specific religion, then yeah, I mean, I think that that's kind of what that entails, you know, uh, and, and as he said, it's a very personal thing for a lot of people and whichever particular, uh, um, you know, idea or concept that you adhere to, I think that absolutely goes into your self love because, um, you know, you got to further your practice, you, you know, you got to further your, 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 um, yeah. your knowledge of that. Um, right. so, uh, you got any, uh, Got any final words, man? You want to wrap it up? My mom yeah. says I appreciate both of you. You know what? That's and my final words. We appreciate you as well, Kathy. Thank you so very much. That's my final words. I appreciate all of you. I appreciate uh, you taking the time out of your day to, to to be here with us, to experience this moment with us. And whatever that does mutually for all of us, that's what it does. That's it. Right on. Um, yeah, and, and before I uh, wrap it up here, just once again, thank you everybody for tuning in. We do appreciate you, actually, whether you're listening on any of the multiple podcast platforms that we're on, or if you're watching us on uh, youtube.com slash Dharma Time. If you are on that, make sure you subscribe, hit the little alert button. It, believe it or not, it does help us. Um, or you're checking us out on facebook.com slash WPSN99, which allows you to watch live and, and comment, and we'll put your comment up on the screen if, if you want. Um, but anyways, uh, so yeah, let me wrap it up here. Um, self-love is important. It, it, it is absolutely important. It's not something to say, oh yeah, I need, no, 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 no. It is really, really up there in importance as far as, uh, where our, our success comes from, how we view others, how we're viewed by others. Uh, it's all kind of connected, right? And, and so that self-love is extremely important. And, and so the first tip that I have on today's tips is number one. Nobody in life deserves your love and compassion more than you. Um, I've said that before. I'll say it again. Um, I, I think too many people just hear that and goes in one ear out the other. So I'm going to repeat it for you. You can look through this entire world. You can meet every human being that exists on this planet. And you will never find somebody in your life that's more deserving of your love and compassion than you. Um, leads me to my second tip. My second one is... Now, loving yourself does not mean that you have to take that love from other people. There's plenty of love to go around, guys. Uh, uh, loving myself does not mean that, that I, I neglect or deny my friends and my family, my colleagues, things of that nature. It's not one or the other. They're not mutually exclusive. You can love yourself while at the same, token, or same time giving love and, and attention to the people around you. Um, and then finally, my, my, third, my third one is you can't love others without loving yourself. You might think you can, you might convince yourself that you can, but you truly can't. Because once again, you can't fill from an empty cup. If you walk around and your cup is empty, you're not filling it with love, you're not making yourself feel a certain kind of way, you're not coming from a, a healthy mindset where you're, you're able to be all that you can be for the people around you, including yourself, you'll never be able to fill those people's cups. You'll never be able to love them in the way that they need to be loved. Because you, you're, you're coming from a, a, an empty place, essentially. And that's why it's important to fill your cup. That's why it's important to have self-love, especially in today's day and age, man. When there's so many things out there right now that are, are pulling from us, that are, are messing with our heads, that are making us angry, making us fearful, making us anxious, making us, you know, all these 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 uh, detrimental things. Now more than ever, is it's really, really important to give ourselves uh, self-love. So uh, anyways, I think that's all I got today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure you check us out on Friday at uh, 12 o'clock Eastern time for The Couch Live. Uh, and that's all we got. So now that you know better, do better. Peace.
<laughs> are you still here? What are you doing? I told you, go do better. <laughs>